Hey guys and gals, Nary here from Drake Wing Gamers. Somebody me on Twitter, the Gaming Dragon. Today I'm coming back at you another Let's Play episode of Temptations Ballad. So, let's go ahead and just jump right back in, shall we? Please sit back and enjoy it for the next 18 minutes while entertaining you, and let's jump right in. Alarm Chan, you are up, and let's go. Last place we left off was the training. Uh, poor Sid. <clears throat> Alright, here we go. Um, it feels a little too tight, if, uh, too light, if I'm being honest. Mario let another barking laugh and gave Sid a back slap that would have killed a lesser man. <laughs> the heavy axe is too light for you. A man after my own heart. In that case, how about dual wielding? Two axes are certainly heavier than one. Sid yelped and scrambled to catch the two medium axes that Mero threw at him. He twirled both weapons in his hands timidly before setting them back down. I'm gonna be real honest, sir. I'm not coordinated enough for these. I'd sooner chop off my own tail before hitting someone else. Hmm, good point. You do have that adorable, bumbling look about you. Let's see, something heavy. Oh, tapped his chin as he pondered thoughtfully. Sid let an amused chuckle as he watched the older hyena scratch his chin. Cole had the same habit whenever he was thinking hard about something. Despite the significant differences, these two were certainly father and son. Mary let out a triumphant laugh and clapped his hands together excitedly. Ha! And I know just the thing for you. It's a real special one right here. It's made by the same blacksmith who forged my signature Damascus steel great axe. I never got around to using it, though, since it's a little too fancy for my tastes. Don't you worry, it ain't no, no hand-me-down or something like that. It's the heaviest weapon in the Bonebreaker armory. Nobody else here could even pick it up. Sid gulped. Are you, sh are you sure a rookie like me would have something, would have, should have something so important? Of course! If you're working for my son, you're gonna have the best option we can give you. And accept nothing less. Arrow ruffled through several crates in the supply closets before returning with a grin. Oh, that is that's a that looks like a halberd. That looks like a, yeah, that looks like a halberd. In his hands was a massive yep silver halberd with a soft blue cloth tied to its hilt. Sid felt his heart skip a beat. He grasped the long handle nervously. The metal felt cool to the touch, but warmed quickly in his grip. This halberd was very heavy, incredibly so. An enchanted smile spread across Sid's face as he swung it around in wide arcs, swirling, swirling it fancifully around his arm before resting it on his shoulders. His halberd was heavy, but in his hands it felt perfect. It's perfect! Th thank you so much, sir! I'll be sure to put it to good use! Good boy! Make sure you work hard to become worthy of this butte. It's one of the best weapons in our arsenal. The blacksmith calls it the Lanius. Apparently it's got a few special abilities, too. Like if you like if you tug the handle just right. Sid suddenly let a yelp as the halberd spasmed against his grip. In a sharp metallic clink, the handle instantly shortened and transformed the halberd into a large axe. Whoa! That's pretty handy! That's the reason why it's so damn heavy. Apparently this thing can transform into a lot of shapes. I never bothered to figure out how to use it, though. I prefer my weapons to be a bit more straightforward. As if to demonstrate, Marrow and clasped the massive black great axe from his back. A feral grin spread across Marrow's face. Now that you got your weapon choice sorted out, let's let's see how well you use it. There was a silver blur as Marrow suddenly lunged forward. Sid barely had time to react, but the squeeze Elanius Halberd instantly extended to its original length, just in time to block Marrow's strike with a metallic clang. Marrow snarled and continued leaning into his swing. Sid suddenly Sid felt himself being lifted off the ground and tossed around the room. Adrenaline pumped through Sid's veins as he scrambled back onto his feet while gripping his new Halberd tightly. What? Right now? I thought you were going to teach me the basics first. There's no better teacher than pain and experience. Buckle up, boy. You're in for a bumpy ride. <laughs> oh, God. Poor Sid. Meanwhile, in the Bonebreaker Guild Tavern building, Ham Hamish was, was giving Artemy a tour of the facilities while Cole complained loudly behind them. And back here are the supply closets. Hamish gave Artemy a wry look. Uh, don't come back here. Ever. Uh, the boys get rowdy, and this place becomes wildly inappropriate for a church night. Artemy frowned. I assure you, Sir Hamish, I'm quite prepared to deal with unruly co-workers. Y yeah, Hamish, let her go wherever she wants. It'll be a learning experience. Hamish rubbed his temples and let out a tired sigh. Moving on. Uh, the sparring room in here in the is, is here in the Eastern Hall. And that's where Marrow and Sid are training right now. I'm definitely gonna have to, uh... Put something right there. Here you'll find our armory and battle equipment. Well, I know you already trained in the art of combat. It doesn't hurt to get a little practice in. 
Uh, Sir Sid, are you okay? Artemy rushed forward. Artemy rushed forward. He a healing spell already prepared in the glowing, growing palm, glowing palm. She was stopped by a throwing axe sailing through the air and landing directly at her feet. Don't interrupt our lesson, lassie. Mero turned back towards Sid with a battle addict grin. Boy, is that all you've got? Oh, g give me a second. Hamish sighed and rolled his eyes. Hun, don't break him. You can't teach him anything if he's dead. A little rough housing never hurt anyone. Now get up! Show me if you really got what it takes to be a bone breaker! Whoa! Thunk! Crash! Well, wait a second! Just let me think about this! You think your opponent's gonna just stop and let you catch your breath? Think on your feet, boy! Ah! <laughs> Clang! <laughs> Crash! <laughs> As Sid tried for the umpteenth time to land a single strike on Mara, the hyena leaned over to give Hamish a smooch on the cheek. Marrow, a focus. Don't sweat it, I can multitask. At this point, Sib was a shambling collection of bruises as he panted breathlessly in the sparring room the sparring room floor. The Lanius slipped out of his grip with a thud as the badger waved his hand in surrender. I think I might need a break. Despite the utter beating Marrow had given him, the hyena laughed and gave Sid an approving pat on the head. Not bad, not bad at all. Out of all the new recruits in Bonebreaker history, you lasted the longest in your first training session. You'll make a fine party member for my darling son. Sid's ears pricked up through his exhausted days. Really? You got talent, kiddo. Great natural-born strength and endurance. Your reflexes are nothing to scoff at, either. Mero sheathed his axe and shrugged. But you're probably the clumsiest fighter I've ever seen. You tripped over your own feet more often than you managed to hit me. Oh... Don't feel discouraged, boy. You did well for your first time. You're proud of how far you've come and steeled yourself for the road ahead. That is the attitude of a true warrior. Sid felt his heart fluttered his hero's encouraging words. He nodded earnestly. Thank you, sir. It's been an honor. Mero flashed him another smile before turning to Hamish. The whole hyena leaned forward and gave him yet another smooch on the cheek. Hey, you lovely. Hey, you lovey. How was the tour for the night, for the night lass? Did you miss me? Mm. Hamish sighed. I was gone for 15 minutes. Well, well, I missed you. Are you still angry about our ruined door frame? Because I promise I'll get that fixed up by the end of the week. Though he tried to hide it, a tiny smile quirked at the edge of Hamish's perpetual frown. I'll hold you to that. He turned to address the new, rec the new recruits and noticed Artemis staring at the two of them curiously. Hmm? Is something wrong? But not at all. I was just... Pardon my tactlessness, but are you Sir and... But are you and Sir Marrow married? Cole let out a bitter scoff. Nope. Mero laughed and hung an affectionate arm over Hamish's shoulder. What do you ask, lassie? You think your church will finally bless our union? I did reach out to request a wedding ceremony once. They just slammed the door in my face. Artemis stiffened uncomfortably. Hamish gave her a sympathetic smile. Don't worry about it. There are no hard feelings. Mero and I don't need a formal ceremony for our relationship. Behind them, Cole crossed his arms and shot Hamish in an unimpressed glare. Hamish paused and glanced at Artemy thoughtfully. I understand that your church's teachings. I mean, I hope we are not making you uncomfortable. Not at all. Uh, you needn't apologize, Artemy smiled wistfully. I, I have been learning a lot about families today. I'm starting to realize that I know nothing about how things are supposed to be. Thus, I am in no position to judge. She nodded at Hamish and Mara with a polite smile. You two are very sweet. It's rather refreshing to see. Ah, oh, that's good to hear. I was worried because of how miserable you looked this whole time. Miserable? Lass, you've been wearing that glo- Lass, you've been wearing that glum ex that glum and gloomy look on your face since you walked into this building. Aren't you the creator's chosen or something? They say you're supposed to be this bright little ball of sunshine. What's the matter with you? I, I have? Yeah, you look dead inside. I know you didn't sleep at all last night, but you've been kind of a sad sack all day. My deepest apologies. There's a lot on my mind. I've been doing a lot of thinking lately. The ever-present smile on Mero's face slowly disappeared as, she, as he crouched down to face Artemy at eye level. What kind of thinking? If you're thinking about useful stuff, then go right ahead. But if, you think, but if you're thinking about how miserable you are, then drop it and find something better to do. Ain't nobody, ain't nobody has ever thought themselves into happiness before. Hamish nudged the older hyena irritably. Marrow, be nice. What? I'm just telling her how it is. 
Feeling bad about feeling bad never helped nobody. How does one simply stop thinking about how horrifically unworthy they are? Oh. Artemy sighed, her gaze fixed on the floor. I've been failing my duties non-stop lately, and I've just got into a big fight with Her Excellency of the Church. Should this mission fail, I will lose my title as the Creator's Chosen. What will the people think of me then? I'm already an unimpressed as, as I'm already unimpressive as a knight, let alone the chosen one, and I've been failing the simplest tasks I've been given. Artemis' voice trembled as her all as her as all her plaguing thoughts spilled outward in an incoherent ramble. I've just been terrible. Getting arrested on my first day of work, dragging the night commander the consequences of my mistakes, even my new friends. Our first mission as an adventuring party was to fix my failures. I, I. Artemis' shoulders slumped. I'll never gain Her Excellency's approval at this rate. Maybe all those things she's been saying are true. Her breath was shaky. She let out a hoarse sigh. They say that speaking one's thoughts aloud would help ease the pain, but Artemis just felt worse now. She wiped away the wet tears at the edge of her eyes and blinked. Abruptly, she realized Mara was crouching in front of her face, in front of her at eye level, staring inches away from her face. His face was an unreadable frown. His, gla his glass eye glinted lifelessly in its socket as his other eye seemed to peer straight into her core. S Sir Mara, what are you- Mara suddenly lashed out with his axe in hand. The blunt handle dug into Artemis abdomen and knocked the air from her lungs as she was thrown across the room. The knight tumbled into the middle of the sparring area and struggled to stand. She hunched over, coughing hoarsely. Mara Bonebreaker stepped into the sparring ring with a snarl. What is the meaning of this? Stop talking! Draw your sword! Artemis scarcely raised her blade in time to deflect another swing of Mara's axe. She leapt back onto her feet and hastily summoned her shield with a flash of arcane light. Mara watched her stumble into a battle stance with a grim smirk. Look at my eye, lass. How do you suppose I lost it? A hard won battle, perhaps? Artemy winced as she blocked another axe swing with her shield. Nope! I lost it when I was still a wee young lad. Mara reared back with a forceful kick. Artemy felt the metal of her shield buckle as it took the brunt of her blow. Her legs were shaking as she was sent skidding backwards. My papa was a real ass of a man, always telling me I wouldn't make anything of myself. So I wanted to prove him wrong. I attempted a feat so massive and brave that he'd know if he'd have no choice but to acknowledge me, to be proud of me. You know what happened? You succeeded, right? You're the great Marrow Bonebreaker. Marrow shook his head with a grin. I failed. I lost my eye for my efforts. And you know what my father did when he found me bleeding from an empty eye socket and barely breathing? He just scoffed and left me there. To some people, you're, never, you're just never gonna be enough. Another swing, another block. Artemy skidded back further. She felt the wall of the sparring room press up against her back. Gulping anxiously, she stared at into Mara's feral grin. You want to talk about failure, lass? I, Mara Bonebreaker, have been failing non-stop my whole life. Every step, every attempt, I've been a disappointment to someone. But you know what the difference is between you and me. I would never let anyone talk to me the way you're talking to yourself right now. Artemy held her chest, held her chest large. She ducked another swing of Mero's axe, the blade leaving a massive gash in the wall. She swung her sword low enough towards the hyena's knee, but Mero sidestepped it with ease. Ha! You still got some fight in you after all. That's it, lass. Face me! All that bullshit you keep thinking about is pointless. Stand up and fight! Artemy gritted her teeth and tried to bash Mero aside with her shield. The large hyena took her blow head on with a laugh and shoved her back. You hear that little voice in the back of your head? That's the one that constantly whispering to that you're a failure, that you've accomplished nothing throughout your sad, pathetic life. Give it a kick it in the deck and move on. You ain't got time to fight yourself while you're facing the entire world. Mero barked a laugh and twirled his axe in his hand. And you sure as hell ain't got no time when you're facing me. Hmm? I see. Artemy felt the weight on her shoulder lift as she took a deep breath and stepped forward. In the rush of battle, that dreadful voice was drowned out by a sheer adrenaline. A small, competitive smile spread across her face as she picked herself up off the floor. I, Artemy Johanna Gautier, accept your challenge. The feral battle added to Grinnell Mero's face grew even wider. Let's see what you got, lass. For a moment, the air hung still in the sparring room as the two faced each other. Then Artemy charged. Mero reacted, Mero reacted instinctively with his own strike, but she blocked, in the, she blocked in the nick of time. The hard grind of metal against metal shook the air. Artemy's massive great axe dipped under its own weight. Artemy lunged forward as soon as she saw the grip his, saw his grip slack. No! Oh. Her stance was perfect with practice precision and her, as her sword sliced through the air. A slash, a vertical swing, followed by a thrust. Artemy was a sworn it was a storm of swinging blades, and Mara was lazily sidestepping all of her attacks with ease. What is this, a dance of recital? 
You can't use sword routines straight out of the Church Knights playbook and honestly expect to hit me. I, ha I ate armies of Church Knights for breakfast back in my day. A frustrated growl rumbled at Army from Army's throat as she changed tactics. She lunged forward towards Mero's left side. The hyena didn't even look in her direction as she casually twirled his axe, forcing her to dodge sideways. Going for my blind spot! It'd be clever if every other opponent I faced didn't do the same thing. Army felt her frustration boil over. Something within her snapped. The air suddenly crackled with a burst of lightning as Artemis' eyes glowed. Arcane electricity branched across the knight's sword into armor like furious spikes. Mara raised an eyebrow with interest. You're not just a paladin, are you? A Tempest Domain Clark. Cleric. That explains all the lightning. What a load of magic-y bullshit. Artemis swung her sword. A wave of celestial lightning surged forward, burning through the air in the sparring room with a sharp scent of ozone. Mara let out a laugh and swung his axe. The moment his blade made contact with the arcane lightning, all the magic within the room instantly vanished. Artemis felt her lungs lurch, as though someone had knocked the air and the wind out of her. Surprise! Mero's axe collided with her sword and sent it clattering across the floor. Fully disarmed, Artemis stumbled backwards into feet. Lahina stepped back and stroke, stroked his axe fondly. Damascus steel, the finest in the land. There's a reason this is my favorite axe. It cancels out magic at the slightest touch. He laughed triumphantly. The look on your face was precious. It's a shame you rely on your dinky little spells instead of fighting like a true warrior. Mero was taken by completely by surprise when Artemis' fist connected with his face. His jaw groaned from the brute force of the punch. In that moment, Artemis' face was utterly feral with battle-drunken frenzy. A jubilant, cathartic rage filled her veins as she hit Mero with everything she had. Lahina stumbled backwards and tried to swing his axe in retaliation. Before he could blink, Artemis leapt forward and sank her teeth into Mero's forearm, forcing him to drop his weapon. He snarled, twisting back, and landed a leg square, a leg square at the center of Artemis' abdomen. The knight was sent flying across the room and collided with the wall in a nasty thud. At this point, Hamish jumped into the center of the sparring ring. All right, that's enough! Cole and Sid rushed Artemis' side with bewildered shock. Artie, what the hell was that? Are you okay? Artemis blinked as she picked herself off the floor, a trickle of Mero's blood still dripping down her chin. She rubbed her eyes and blinked again, as though she just realized what happened. Oh my goodness, I'm so sorry! I didn't know what- I don't know what came over me. That was completely improper sparring etiquette. Her apology was interrupted by Mara, who had doubled over laughing breathlessly on the sparring room floor. <laughs> Holy shit! She bit me! The little fucker actually bit me! Mara was almost in tears as he cackled. That's gotta be the most fun fight I've had in years! Huh! <laughs> That's- this has got to- this- this one's got head one head of a spine! <laughs> what a perfect place to pause it. Alright, guys and gals, I'm going to go ahead and pause it right here. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, ring that notification bell. If a super thanks or a tip if you can, it always helps. Until the next video, I love you all. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye!